everyone keeps man coming at you. Following up on our BR and WebXR WebRTC video, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the client side of this whole architecture and talk through kind of the responsibilities of the client in this ecosystem, how it works, and at a very high level, what were the decisions made to actually build it out. If you do have questions about VR WebXR render streaming, definitely I encourage you to check out our previous videos on the topic. Or more broadly, if you do have questions about kind of the technologies that were used on the client, specifically around A-Frame or WebXR, also definitely let me know down in the comments below. To start with, let's talk a little bit about the requirements for the client side of the solution. Since this is a render streaming solution, that video data is coming from the server to our web browser. And so it's our web browser's responsibility to take that video data and correspondingly render it out successfully for the VR headset. Similarly, the render streaming solution needs to know about the device data, specifically your positional and rotational heads and hands that come from the web browser and VR headset. And so it's the responsibility of the web browser to actually send that data to the server over WebRTC. And I think that really encapsulates the two things that you're trying to do all through the WebXR API. One is the rendering, and then two is capturing the data from the device and sending that to the client. Now, there are several ways that you could actually go about building this. In this specific implementation, I chose to go with A-Frame, and we'll dive a little bit more into the details behind why A-Frame in a bit, but at a high level, the simple reason is that it's a high enough level SDK to simplify the development while still giving a little bit of flexibility that is needed through some of the plugins that are available to actually ultimately implement what we want in a kind of straightforward manner. So starting with the device input, WebXR and A-Frame provide very simple APIs where you can literally define in HTML the entities for a camera as well as the different controllers. And then on every frame, you have the ability to capture the position and rotational data through a predefined function. That's perfect exactly for what we need so that we can simply go ahead, get the vector three position and the quaternion rotation or Euler rotation as data. And then we encapsulate that in some binary code that simply defines the float representations for the X, Y, Z's of each of these values. And we can send that as a data packet over UDP to our server. The server then can kind of take all of that data over the data channel through WebRTC. And then once it receives it, updates the scene accordingly. So that really simplifies the, the process by just kind of having these abstractions for each of these different components and just listening for that core value. And the data packets that are provided through the already existing web client that is there is pretty good usage that we can just kind of copy and paste to fit our needs based on the amount of data that we want to send. So that process is, I think, fairly straightforward and the WebXR APIs and A-Frame kind of simplify that for us. I think the more nuanced part of the client is how do you go about rendering the video stream data successfully within BR. Now, again, there are several ways that you could do that. And the path that we're going through in this video might not exactly be the most optimal, but for a prototype does tend to get the job done. Now with A-Frame, we don't have the best access to the camera data that you might say get with something really low level like 3JS, but I, I don't think we really need that for the purposes of what we're trying to do. Instead, because we don't have that and we can't really pipe the video stream as data into the frame buffers, we can, we can kind of emulate that in a sense by leveraging the rendering process. So quite simply in this prototype, just to make the implementation really relatively straightforward, all we're really doing is we take the camera data, which is let's say my head right here, and then we insert two planes that are kind of overlapping, but it, that will be irrelevant a little bit later. So each of these planes right here corresponds to each eye. So the left eye and the right eye. Now the right eye gets one video stream, the left eye gets one video stream. Because these are overlapped in terms of the, or the pixels that each eye sees, we need to actually obscure out each plane so that the left eye doesn't see the right plane and the right eye doesn't see the left plane. 
For that, we are going to be leveraging the A-Frame layers. And layers is a very simple plugin that is available so that you can actually go ahead and define what the left eye sees and what the right eye sees just by literally just integers one and two. And that way, left eye only sees this plane, right eye only sees this plane. We just attach these planes here uh, and that is more than enough for our rendering purposes. Then that video stream for the left eye can be rendered onto the left eye. The video stream for the right eye can be rendered here onto the right eye. Again, could this be optimized a lot more? Yes, but it does do get the job done. A couple of things to note about doing this approach. One is this allows you a little bit of control over IPD. Just as a quick refresher, IPD stands for your inner pupillary distance, which is different for pretty much everyone. Right now, the way I have it implemented is just a very hard coded standard IPD. But to really make this comfortable, you could leverage the WebXR APIs to get the IPD, adjust the plane distance, and then as well, send that data to the server so that it can adjust the rendering. The other thing to note is that I didn't really explain, but hopefully this is kind of obvious. The render streaming has these cameras that are slightly disjointed so that you can get the stereoscopic view. And then by rendering a slightly different version to the left eye, slightly different version to the right eye, that is what allows you to emulate the fact that you are rendering locally on device because you have these cameras with different slightly offset fields of view that then capture the image of what you're trying to see within the VR headset and give you that stereoscopic display. Some other minor things, as I was implementing the web page version, there are a lot of kind of tips and random tricks uh, that you might encounter when using A-Frame that will make your life a lot easier. So for example, if you want to have your own custom set of buttons, there's a VR mode UI option that is enabled through A-Frame. If you want to include options for whether or not to embed A-Frame within the page or if it should just take up the whole field of view, there are options for that as well. They're not really as obvious to find, but when you're really kind of flushing out your own custom HTML page, it's really worth it to leverage these options so that the UI UX of the HTML side of things is a little bit more straightforward and seamless. And I wanted to touch briefly, as I mentioned earlier, around why A-Frame. So some of the constructs like layers and plugins are readily available and easy to use, which makes it super fast to start building and prototyping and iterating in A-Frame for very simple applications like what we're doing here, where we're just attaching planes on top of the camera. And for that, we don't really need to dive into the lower level code of 3.js. Although if you want to, you totally could, especially if you feel comfortable in that regard. Other tooling is a little bit more overly complicated than what we really need for our purposes. And so A-Frame kind of fits that nice balance of exposing the right APIs to us through WebXR that we can quickly grab the correct data, render the very simple scene that we have, and have that encapsulated in just really a few lines of code for the client through JavaScript. And I think with that, that kind of covers high level what I wanted to discuss around the client side. If again, if you have questions around WebXR, A-Frame, or what we're doing with WebXR render streaming, I'd love to hear those and talk about them down in the comments below. Otherwise, I think that'll do that for now. And then in the next video, we'll dive a little bit deeper into the backend side of things and the render streaming server and some of the uh, implementations that were needed for creating actually an SDK that you could use within Unity to build out a render streaming VR game. So definitely look forward to that. And otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's been Fuse Man.